public drag performances are now against the law in Tennessee. The state's Republican governor, Bill Lee, signed a first-of-its-kind bill prohibiting drag shows on public property or any location where they can be viewed by minors. The bill specifically bans, quote, adult cabaret entertainment, such as topless dancers, go-go dancers, exotic dancers, strippers, male or female impersonators, or similar entertainers. Not only does this language paint drag as overtly sexual, which it's not, activists warn the vague wording outlawing male or female impersonators also puts trans people at risk of being punished for merely existing in public. And here's the thing. This isn't just a Tennessee problem. Lawmakers in more than a dozen other states, including my home state of Texas, West Virginia, and Nebraska, have proposed measures that would similarly restrict drag. Joining me now is Eureka O'Hara. She's a Tennessee native, a drag performer, and former contestant on RuPaul's Drag Race. She's also a trans activist and the producer and star of HBO's We're Here. Eureka, thank you for joining me. What does this new Tennessee law do to the drag and LGBTQ community there? I think honestly what it does is it just instills fear in us, which society has continued to do to the LGBTQ community, but it's also hindering us from being successful and allowing people to experience our art, which pushes equality, it pushes representation. And drag queens have always been at the front and the forefront of queer activism. Even at the Stonewall riots, it's known that a drag queen threw the first stone. And how dangerous does this law make it for drag performers and, and trans people uh, to just exist there in Tennessee? Thank you. I really appreciate that question because what it does is it actually supports people that are discriminatory and have a bigot mindset in a way that they feel validated because someone with a position of power, such as someone we voted into office, is basically sexualizing our existence and also tearing it down to um, stripper notoriety, which actually takes away a lot of the hard work that a lot of us put in to create equality and love and uh, to create families for ourselves. When a lot of times queer people don't have that to exist or coexist or even learn how to become the adults they should be. And I know based on your life experience and, and your activism, uh, that you have a unique perspective on this, and you're originally from Eastern Tennessee. Do you feel safe in your home state these days? No, I mean, I never felt truly safe. I, I As soon as I was able to run to California, I did, because I actually um, detransitioned early in my 20s out of fear, out of trauma, out of abuse that I received from that social moral coded society. And until recently, I actually didn't come out fully as trans because I didn't believe that I would be safe or be able to have success in my life. And luckily drag is what gave me the confidence to be able to do that. And that's why I sat here and I speak for all of my community when I say that I our intention is never to harm children. Our intention is to speak to those little queer children that are like we were when we were at that age that need representation and visibility. And they need pe to see people like them or else they're gonna be lost and it's gonna push them down a really dark path. And that is what we should be afraid of more than drag queens appearing in public. We know that Tennessee is just one of many states right now trying to ban drag performance and trans health care as well. In fact, according to Trevor Project's national survey, 93% of trans and non-binary youth say they're worried about being denied access to gender-affirming medical care due to state or local laws. How concerned should we all be about this? I mean, honestly, it not only is taking away parental rights to raise their children and to bring diversity into their homes and their existence, but also it's taking away the opportunity for someone at a young age to truly discover who they are. I can tell you all that from a very, very, Honestly, the first thoughts of who I was as a person, I always felt indifferent from the people around me. Um, I never felt like I belonged. And it was never because I was queer or gay or uh, quote unquote 
F-A-G, like that was called. It's because of my gender. I didn't feel like the boy that they were calling me as. So I know from personal experience that it can be very traumatizing to that existence. It can be harmful to the health of these children. You know, they're also demanding for people that have already been on and these children to be off of that HRT therapy they've been on in a very aggressive pattern, which isn't healthy either. I mean, this is also a medical issue. I mean, it's it's, I, I just don't understand how we can take away the rights of uh, people being able to provide medically and making parental decisions for their own children, um, as well as outlawing those parental decisions as well. It's really scary and harmful to those children and other queer kids like them or anyone that wants to be indifferent from moral code in society. Well, on Thursday, you announced that you've officially been able to legally change your name and gender marker. Uh, first of all, congratulations. Uh, talk Thank to you me. so much. Uh, yeah, and talk to me, Eureka, about that moment and what it means for you, especially uh, as the LGBTQ community faces attacks from all sides. Um, it was it was extremely exciting. I you know I was overwhelmed with happy tears uh, because I never thought a million years I would ever see um, my living society acknowledge me. Um, for who I really am. And it was just powerful. And it just really gave me the fire I needed. And I still fear because in Tennessee, there are um, marker changes on documents that I need to be able to thrive, even though I was accepted that change, where there are laws still in place that, that are going to strict me from being able to have those documents to continue living successfully. So I'm hoping that I can even fight that, um, being Tennessee, one of many states that still have those restrictions on birth certificates, social security, alterations, things like that, um, but someone who gets married and so on and so forth, there's no issues. Um, I think that there is a, um, there's just a underlying um, negativity around being trans or gender non-conforming, any type of gender expression that's not to a social norm of the binary. And um, it's just harmful to the progression of our society and our youth, especially at the diversity level that our youth is at today, because they are discovering who they are so early in life. Absolutely. Eureka O'Hara, thank you for joining me.